What's up YouTubers, and today we're going to be ranking Naruto characters. More specifically, we're going to be ranking them from Naruto Shippuden. I'm actually wearing an appropriate shirt for this match. We've ranked some of these characters from their appearance within the original pre-time skip Naruto series, so we're going to be ranking them again based upon their appearance within Naruto Shippuden. And as I mentioned in the first video guys, I'm a huge fan of Naruto. I've watched Naruto Shippuden from beginning to end, fellow included. So I like to say I know these characters pretty well. But safe to say, as time goes on, I might have forgotten some bits and pieces about these characters. I might have forgotten some of these characters. So apologies in advance if I don't care about your favourite character. I mean, to be fair, can you blame me? There's like over 200 characters in Naruto. I don't think anyone will blame me for getting one or two. This list doesn't even contain all the characters anyway. I think this list mainly contains like the main characters that we tend to focus on within Naruto Shippuden. Which is probably a good thing for me. <laughs> so let's go over the ranking first of all. So we've got our S, A, B, C and D. D, these are our Naruto mission ranks, so it only makes sense that we use these as well. We've got Na for characters I believe don't fit in any of these categories. And don't remember, because let's face it, I'm not going to remember them all. And of course, if you like this content, don't forget to do a like a no jutsu. It really helps this channel out. And if you like my content as well and you want to keep up to date, go ahead and do the subscribe jutsu as well. I hear if you're one of the few people that's done both, you get to unlock Sage Mode. One last thing before we get started, of course, since I'm talking about these characters, they're going to be spoilers related to Naruto Shippuden, so please keep that in mind while continuing on this video. So let's get started, because honestly, I have no idea how I'm going to cope with all these characters. So we're going to start off with the third Raikage, the only appearance we get to see him in is I believe when he's a reanimated ninja. And also I gotta say, he's pretty cool. We get to see him for a short amount of time. He's an amazing character within the Ultimate Ninja Storm games. So I'm gonna put him into a solid uh, B. The only reason he's not in A is because I think it's kinda stupid that the only reason he got that scar on his chest was the fact that he landed on his own hand. And, no, and he just was so embarrassed that he never told anyone. Oh my god, that is so hilarious and stupid. And yet, so relatable. Next up is one of the seven ninja swordsmen that got reanimated. And honestly, I cannot remember for the life of me. I can't even remember what weapon they used. It was just the villain of the mini arc of the arc. That's all I can remember. They're not even playable characters in Ultimate Ninja Storm as well. They just... They're just, they're just you just steamroll them. So honestly, I'm just going to put them in now nah, because I can't be bothered to remember. Anko. Honestly, I think Anko, I, I might best pronounce the name. <laughs> she was barely a character, really. The only thing I can like, really say that's made a big impact is the fact that she made a big impact in Boruto. Honestly, the only other thing I can remember about her is that she's Orochimaru's assistant back when he was in the Hino Leaf Village. She's got snake related jutsu and has a bit of a sweet tooth. Other than that, I think like the only other big appearances was in the original Naruto series. Not really much within Shippuden. Then again, she did make appearances like in the war arc because she was a part of reviving Orochimaru. But after that, we didn't really get to see much of her. Was she just left in the cave until later on? I don't think that was that was really touched upon. Poor Anko. Honestly, from her appearance within the original Naruto and with what little we see, I'm going to put her into C because she is a bit of a badass and it's a good thing we're not counting the Boruto stuff. <laughs> I honestly can't remember this next character's name for the life of me. I want to say Ao. Oh, I want to say that. I want to. <laughs> He's part of the Hidden Mist Village and possesses a Byakugan thanks to war. He's part of the Sensory Ninja, so he's very good with giving us information about the situation on the battlefield and very close to the Mizukage. I'm going to put him in D, because honestly I can barely remember him, but I definitely know quite a good Sensory Ninja. That's all I can remember. Asuma Sensei. Come on, we all know Asuma's going straight into A tier. 
just because of his own arc as well that he taught naruto the basis of wind style we got to learn a lot more about him i've just wiped my mic and the final battle he had with the two akatsuki members kakazu and hidan that was very good it was all stacked up against him because they were both immortals but they did an amazing job and may i say that his final moments oh my god put a tear in my eye ashira the sage of six paths younger son what will soon become our main character i want to say like he does remind me a lot of naruto i wonder why he definitely holds some values i, I would relate to friendship and all, all that i i do know like the naruto shippuden storyline eventually changed because of madara's power and that the creator struggled to see a way to beat madara but i wonder would they actually kept the reincarnation thing if he did find a way to defeat Mada, would that still been a thing? I wonder. But I do like Ashura. There was not, there's not much really about, about him. But I think that's like the point, really. But he's he's kind of cool, really. I, I do admire the whole reincarnation thing as the source of Naruto's power. So I'm going to put him into C. The fourth Raikage. One of the current Kage that we know within the Naruto Shippuden storyline. Has a bit of a lightning cloak, super speed. Really strong. Lost an arm thanks to Sasuke. <laughs> I say we're going to put him in B. Alongside his predecessor. Just because of the fact that they've got the same abilities. Yes he's a lot more pre present so. Yeah I'm going to put him above. I'm going to put him. I can't go above. There we go. We'll put him above his predecessor. Just because he's got a little bit more of a problem role. He's not a hidden leaf ninja. So we don't really have that much connection with him. So, like we, we mainly like learn more about him with his stories. That, that we get throughout the other characters. But he's still a pretty impressive ninja in my opinion. Hashirama's father. I honestly don't know anything about you. We're going in don't remember. You're the first ever Mizukage if I remember isn't the only interaction we get with you is in a flashback scene and you barely talked? So don't remember you. Alright, we got... Pe Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look, to are we really ranking all the individual pains? Are you serious? We're ranking all the individual pains? This is pain? Okay. So I have to try and remember these pains ability. Are you serious? They're, they're, they're not even characters. Oh my god. Hang on. Do we get um? Do we get Nagato in this list? I I need to see this for myself. Do we get Nagato at the very least? There he is. There. That's a very dark. But no wonder I couldn't see you. Do I really have to rank all these individual pains? This is literal pain. I, I'm just going to put you guys into Nah. Because I don't want to rank. Not you. Go back. Nah. Because I don't want. To rank you guys, what personality do you have? Spoilers, they're just courts being controlled. There's no personality in the puppeteer. Granny Chokyo, I probably mispronounced that as well. Give me a break. She was the character in the first arc that gave us the information about being a Jinchuriki, which honestly is pretty cool in my my opinion. In the original Naruto series, we didn't get any word about. Chinchuriki or what tail beast are. All we knew about was Shikaku and the Nine Tails. We didn't know about this whole tail beast situation. And she pretty much told us about this new concept going into Shippuden, which I really like. She was a puppet master using Sasori's mother and father. Came back as a reanimated ninja. Could finally rest in peace after seeing that the puppets had been put into Conqueror's hands. And I gotta admit, it's kind of funny that she used the reanimation jutsu to like pass on her puppet jutsus to Kankuro by fighting him. So, honestly, gotta say with respect, she's going to see uh, way above these two. Way above these two. It was a short and sweet time that we've had with her. I honestly can't remember your name for the life of me. Do do we really get any like character interaction with you? I know you're like you're you're supposed to be like a new member of the Seven Ninja Swordsman. Your future Mizukage and you protected the elders and stopped Black Setsu. You're gonna join your friend down here in the. Because I honestly cannot again remember you. But I know your accomplishments. The Seven Tales. Also known as Chome. Honestly I admit. I did find Chome very interesting. Because when we um, see him as a baby. He's like a little lava. And then in the modern days. That is Firefly sort of thing. I, I find that pretty cool. 
It was one of the hardest hill beasts to fight against in Ultimate Ninja Storm. We don't really get to learn that much personality with the tail beast uh, apart from our uh, like eight and nine tails. But oh, uh, how to rank you? The only tail beast that can fly. That's pretty cool, actually. Uh, we'll put you in like C because again, the tail beasts are so iconic when we get to meet them as well. Way much, yeah, way much more impact than you two. Uh, yeah, mate. Yeah, we'll put you in high C. Chomi, we'll put you in high C. Because as much as you, like, make a huge impact, that's all you're going for, we don't really know that much about personality, really. Because, again, the only, like, tail beasts and the Chinchurikis that like, we really get to interact with is the one tail, eight tails, and nine tails. We don't really get to know that much more about the other tail beasts, apart from when Obito fights with them, when they're freed, and that's about it. Then they get recaptured, and we don't really get to learn much. Choji, our plump boy is back. I like that with Choji's character in Shippuden, he's using his mask to like his advantage, really mastering the expansion jutsu to not only like be using in his hands, gigantify, and even using a butterfly wing. After the final battle with reanimated Asuma, that like, he just sh shot up, got big butterfly wings and say he's gonna end the war that was a very awesome scene he's grown up he's learned to take on the responsibilities even though he's a kind sweet person to be able to go into battle as well we're going we're putting you up there in a with your sensei his father do we really get to see much about his father uh barely remember i can barely remember your father oh my god i know it was like a commander like of the Akamichi clan. I'm now trying to remember if that's the right name. <laughs> and um, explain like the whole partial expansion and uh, when Joji fully expands, like he's okay now. We don't have to worry about when he first saw the butterfly wings and all that. Could have put you into. Um... Nah, because again, it's just like we don't really need to see much. We got my guy's dad. And honestly, even though. It was filler, I want to say, that we learned about my guy's dad. I can't really not remember really if it's filler or not. But they packed so much personality into my guy's dad and why my guy's the way he is. My guy's dad was like a failed ninja, but he learned like the seven gates and all that. Or the eight gates, I can't remember. I want to say eight now. <laughs> to my guy and being like inspiration that even though he doesn't know ninja, so you can still become amazing. That's pretty cool. Basically, my guy's inspiration, but it's no my guy. So again, a nah. I can't remember your name, but you're also known as First Love. I got it. We mainly got to learn about his first love within the first Naruto. The only real scene that we get to see him in Shippuden is when he's a ninja, he gets stopped. When the Jutsu gets undone, he goes and possesses Tsunade with a Jutsu, give her some chakra and some pep talk before passing on. But apart from that, nothing. Just Tsunade influence. I wanna. I'm. I'm gonna put him into not. Nah, honestly, because again, we don't really get that much. Oh god. I. I have a feeling someone's gonna have a go at me now for just like having a lot of these characters put into not. Nah, but honestly, I think um it's very understandable why I'm just putting into not. Nah. Danzo, very creepy bad guy in Shippuden. Re really, the Shadow Hokage to the third. And possible the fifth Okage? I think, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah he counts as a Shadow Okage in the fifth one. He has his own group of Anbu Black Ops as as well. Like, that seal their own emotions away to do the jobs that the normal Hokage would not really tend to do. He wants the Hokage position so much that he's even used manipulation and even a forbidden jutsu to get to it. Not to mention as well, that arm with all the Sharingans in, oh my god. If he wanted an excuse to, like, massacre the Uchiha Khan, that, I think that was the sole reason behind it, just to get that arm. Just so that way he can have the power of the Uchiha. He went out with a bang, and in the fill arcs, when we get some backstory on characters, you see a lot more of his manipulation using uh, Yamato, keeping the secret of the wood style, trying to get Kakashi to join him, and all that. That was that was pretty cool. I'm gonna put him all the way up to B, high B, because the the presence of the loan, the manipulation, yeah, oh my god, and the fight with Sasuke was definitely very intense.
I can't remember your name. The only personality I remember from you is, um, this is lame. That's the only thing I can remember about him, about this guy. So, I'm going to put you in don't remember. I, I'm trying to think, is this a character that is the Gale style? Is that a different character? I think that's a different character. The one I'm remembering. The one that does Gale style. The hairstyle is similar, but different. Oh yeah, he's Gale style. I believe he's like the next Raikage. I believe, yeah, that's all I can remember. Since I remember you've done the Gale style, we'll put you into D, uh, high D. Because I admit, the Gale style looked pretty cool in all the storm, and I do like the animation in the anime. That's all I can like really remember. Daydola. I gotta admit, I think my brother likes this character. <laughs> Using detonation clay, making some art which is pretty cool it was like one of the first akatsuki members they faced within naruto shibuden as well it's like set the scale of how strong these akatsuki members are going to be and i'll go man i really do like um this like explosion style so we're gonna put him into b uh i'm gonna like put him there i don't think you make an appearance at all so i don't if you do i don't remember we're gonna put you in don't remember konohamaru's like sensei again we know he's like the Sensei Squad from the very first episode. I think I remember him more from the original Naruto series. Because it was like one of the Joni that didn't accept Naruto. But then he... like The only other thing I can remember Shibun that he's done was during the Pain arc when Pain invaded the Leaf Village. Like he tried to give Konohamaru some time to escape. Acknowledge that Naruto has become someone that everyone can lean on. And then in the, like the filler arc... With, like Konohamaru trying to learn the Rasengan, or like it was questioning if he was like really like a teacher for these students. I'm gonna put you in D, just like low D, because I wanna say you just didn't really do that, that much in the in the long run. Itachi and Sasuke's father, leader of the Uchiha clan, he like really laid the groundwork for the like, Uchiha rebellion, only for it to be turned into Uchiha massacre. But then to give himself up to Itachi for the best of the Hidden Leaf Village, that was kind of cool and badass. Like, he's choosing to believe in his kids in the very end. Not really that much of a father, though, considering he just, like, ignored Sasuke a lot. Only when Itachi, like, started to, like, bridge away that he chose to give Sasuke some attention and, like, hope that Sasuke was going to be as good as Itachi. I'm going to put you in now, because, again, you were just <laughs> not that good of a father. Don't really remember you. All I know about you is that you possess some Ahada in the past. And that's honestly, that's all I can like remember. So yeah, you should actually go into Nah. With, like with the rest of you, Seven, Doom, the Seven Swordsmen. I really hope this list is not going to be with me constantly being put, putting people into Nah. I really hope. Boo! The Seven Tail Jean Chuliki. We don't really get to know much about her apart from the fillers. She was a part of the tuning exam along with uh, the main cast. Had a connection with Gara, but then shortly after died. Wow. <laughs> but I did like Fu's personality really when throughout the filler arc. It was very good. Shame it was a filler. I wish we got to see more of her, which we did in a different filler. So I'm going to put her into C tier around here wish we had more of her mike guy another prominent shinobi can't do jutsu but his taijutsu is off the chain rivaling that of kakashi i gotta admit when it was announced kakashi was gonna be the next okage and he went to challenge him that was amazing to see fighting alongside kakashi to save not only naruto but to go toe to toe with madara when he was the Tentail Jinjuriki as well, risking his life. That was an epic scene. My guy, I salute you. You're going straight up into S tier. Elder Sage, the frog that taught Naruto Sage mode. I gotta admit, I really did like this character. He worked alongside Jiraiya doing pain fight, so it was a lot personal for him. His death was an utter shock as well. But I was happy to see him get revive as well. We're going to put you low B. The Chief Toad. Honestly, I, I find it funny that he kept putting his own son in instead of him. But the, the pain storyline when he actually got to see him fight, that was kind of cool. If only um we got to see like, a bit more of him. But then again, it was like it was getting on in a year, so it makes sense. 
So I'm going to put him into C tier. No, very next to the Seven Tails. Right now. Uh, forgotten your name. I want to say Bunter. I feel like that's wrong. I like the whole running gag that he's not graceful. Makes sense because he's a big giant frog. But it gets really annoying very quickly that he just says he's not graceful. We get it. Uh, we're going to put you into D right here. Gamakichi. I got it. I really loved when he was like Naruto size, like the whole interaction thing. But why the hell at like, the final battle treat like uh, this is the first time they've seen each other? I get it. I get it. He, he made like a proper appearance like in filler when we first saw him. But they could have altered the storyline at least to acknowledge that Naruto actually met Gamakichi before and not treated like the first time. But I, I really liked Gamakichi. I'm surprised his adult self is like really taken into this world. Uh, I really did like him in his first appearance as well. I I like him more than dad. Uh, the Mitsukage whose main power comes from a clan that does hidden genjutsu. Again, I can barely remember him. For God's sake. Uh, another one for the nah. Cause I don't really care. Ginkoku and Ginkoku. I can't. I'm not saying tell them, but where, where's the other one? I know like one means gold, one means silver. There we go. We're gonna rank them together. These are hidden cloud ninja that actually took on the nine tails. What's eaten? Ate the nine tails from inside and gained their chakra. We only got seen as like rare and ninja, but I like that whole concept that yeah, there can be other Jinchuriki out there with the same. Tail beast just with the chakra, the concept which we saw in Phil arcs. So I I, I like these two. I wish it was like saw a bit more like how much of the tail beast power did we see? We saw and got the cloak, but that's about it. Can like can they turn into the tail beast, which would be cool. I'm gonna put them in the uh, mid D together. We got the eight tails, also known as Gyuki. I got them. The first tail beast that got along with humans. That was pretty cool. And bull octopus. That's kind of an interesting combination. Strength of a bull but with the multi hands of an octopus. That was pretty cool. I really like Yuki. Ink based attacks. Along with his own tail beast type of attacks. Giving himself an octopus pod for defense. And the Jinchuriki getting the octopus arms as well. That's just kind of cool. I'm going to put him in a uh, A tier. Why not? I think I like him more than these two, actually. So, yeah, we're going to put him in high A. The Sage of the Sixth Pass. We didn't get to really see him in action, apart from that, that flashback scenes, where we barely got a saw him face off against his own mother. Total rip. But we get to see him face the foundings of Shinobi, of Chakra. He gave Naruto and Sasuke their new abilities, brought him back from the other dimension. Really, really cool. Um, He's, he's going into low A just for presence alone. Haku, huh? Why is Haku in this list? He only came back as a random ninja to like the old purpose of them coming back was like really push Kakashi over the edge, really showing that this reanimation jutsu can really mess with people, make them really relive trauma that they don't want to live through, bring back people that they've just managed to get over. I agree with Kakashi. Reanimation really is unforgivable. So we're going to put him... Uh, C. Don't remember you. I really want to say, like, you're the bad guy from the last movie. Mm. I feel like I am right. It's either that or you're Hakuromo's brother. Are you? Um, There's not much really about you, right? I can barely remember. We're going to put you into D. Yeah, D there. Han? Again, barely any personality. The only thing I remember about Han is from a filler arc. And that his powers gave him like a steam train type ability. He just like ran over like a bunch of men and ran like a train. That's the only thing I remember. And now that lives in my head rent free. <laughs> We're going to put you into now just because of that. No, 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 actually, we're going to put you into a low D, because I put a smile on my face. I feel like I haven't even made a dent in this list yet. God. Hanzo, the Salamander. I know he was like a poison jutsu specialist. Uh, he gave the free Sanin, the, the nickname of the Sanin. Was the former leader of the Inner Rain Village until Pain took over. I'm going to 
put them into C for presence alone. Yeah, we're going to put them just a little below the frogs. Because I know he's a very strong ninja, but that's all I can, like, really remember. Hashirama sends you the first Hokage. I'm really grateful for Shibuya that we got to learn more about Hashirama. Being a wood style specialist, the only ninja to know wood style until his cells were retrieved. The power to seal away the tail beast. Found of the hidden leaf village. Wood sage mode as well. We're going to put him into A. Just a little above the sage. Because even I can't deny the first Okage is amazing. Don't know you, he done. What I want to know is, what is this Lord Jashin business? I know because of it, he's immortal and he has a jutsu. If you can even call it a jutsu, it transfers his injuries to someone else. That is pretty busted, if you ask me. Presence alone, shocking. He's the one who killed Asuma. I'm gonna put him into B. You can join Daedra. It's quite an intimidating villain. Hinata, ah oh sweetie, the Byakugan princess, S, 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 S. Is it bias? Probably. But come on, Hinata made such a huge presence of Inchibudan. Sign off as this really shy girl, but she grew up really well. To even jumping in to try and help Naruto, even sacrifice himself to try and free Naruto. Luckily she got revived, yes. But why the hell did Naruto forget that she said she, she loved them? But to really come into her own the war, really being able to stand side by side with Naruto even holding his hand. Oh my god, yes. Neji, your sacrifice will not be forgotten. You gave Hinata the courage to not only slap Naruto, but to hold his hand. And of course, the last movie moment. Oh, that was so beautiful. And then of course, the final filler with the Naruto wedding. The Tails fillers as well. Do they count as fillers, actually, since they're based upon light novels? I'm on the fence about that. It was just so awesome to see Hinata. So, yeah, S. Here is in the third Hokage. Terrible, again, what you did to Naruto. We didn't even get an apology for that. <laughs> he was there, really, to explain why Itachi did what he had to do to Sasuke. Jutsu Alice explaining what's going on with the Dental Jujuriki when it was Obito. And just, like, give them support you're going into C tier round there is that a downgrade or an upgrade from when I put you in the last one now you still in C so you you stayed there was no change there Kitame Hoshigaki I really did like Kitame in this um series one of the things that I really remember him for was his fight against the egg tails Calling himself the tailless tail beast. I thought that was a very interesting concept considering he can literally use his opponent's chakra given the impression that he has bondless chakra which is kind of cool. I like that he didn't call himself the zero tail which leaves open to the zero tails which you saw in the second movie. He merged with his sword as well to give him the shark motif as well which is kind of cool. He really used Sami Hada well. I say he deserves uh, to be an A tier. Yeah, I think that's a good place for him. I've forgotten your name, but you're part of the Hidden Leaf Interrogation Unit. You were mainly used to analyze the pains, I want to say. Like, get information from inside the head. But I'm going to put you into now, because I just honestly... Phew, can barely remember you in Shibuden. Indara. You're like Sasuke before the Sasuke. <laughs> Believe you can only get power on your own. And you should... Uh, uh, Conditions with Sharingan did not help at all with that. I'm gonna put you alongside your brother up here, but you're gonna be but you're gonna be below your brother, cause I say so. Eno, I gotta admit, Eno, I like, but is it bad that I prefer the outfit from Child Eno than Teen Eno? If they just like swap outfits, I don't know why. I think that'll be bad. <laughs> I like to say Eno is not as like stuck up in this season. Like she respects her teammates a lot more. I'm gonna put her into B, like up here. Yeah, high B, top B. It's a good thing it's in the waifu list. <laughs> but I say like, you know, definitely has came into her own in Shippuden. 
with medical ninjutsu alongside mind transmission jutsu as well. She was good at relaying intel as well in the war. That's another good thing about her. Her father, honestly can't remember much about him. Is this going to be a recurring thing where I'm just going to honestly keep pointing the dads in now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really think that's going to be the case. Iruka. Even in Shippuden, he played quite a prominent role. Being a support for Naruto, as well as when the, during the war arc, when Naruto learned about the war, he trusted Naruto and he trusted him to kill a bee. Come on. That was an amazing scene to see. That Iruka still believed in Naruto, even in this hopeless situation. He's still going up there in the A tier. Uh, yeah, you're going in there, you're going in, you're going into high A. You've fallen a bit from S for, for the original Naruto series, but I still think of you as a very prevalent character for Naruto. No, what, you know what, no, I just remembered that scene when Naruto asked him to be the father on his side for the wedding. That was such an emotional scene. And of course, like, when the filler arcs as well, near the end of Shippuden, where he got offered to be, like, the head teacher, he wasn't quite sure. And the fact that he's she's still helping students as well. That is awesome. No, you're going back into S. You're going back into S. Low S. You're the first Kaze Kage? No, you're not the first Kaze Kage. Which Kage are you? Doesn't matter, you're going into Don't Remember. Well, I think it's like, again, you don't really have that much personality to really, really show. The third tales, Isubu. I think I really gotta say about Isubu. He's one of the tail beasts outside of, like, the three we really get to know of in Shippuden that had a lot of appearances. He first appeared within a filler arc where an experiment of Orochimaru's was able to control it. I wish that was a little bit more flushed out. Only did they get later captured by the Akatsuki. We then learn that Reen was the Jinchuriki of the Three Tales. And of course the appearance against Naruto controlled by Obito. Pretty cool. A water based tail beast, which is pretty cool. Hard shell. I gotta say, we're gonna put in with Chomusuke. Why am I keep calling Chome Chomusuke? I don't know. I'm, I'm remembering Mimikin Mimikin Mimiku that <gasps> No reason to speak. I'm re remembering Megumin's cat for some reason. Doesn't help that the names are so similar. We're going to put him underneath the seventh tails, Chome. We're going to put him in the tail beast order, probably. <laughs> Itachi. My god. Itachi went from one of the most overpowered villains to ever see to probably one of the most loved anti heroes or possibly the greatest hero in Naruto history. Having the weight of the Ochiyas on his shoulders, the fact that he's not only he fought Sasuke while being tremendously ill. But using the reanimation ninja suit to not only let him fight as a hidden leaf ninja once again, but to finally answer the questions we had about Itachi, like why did he do it, and to pass his memories on to Sasuke. That was awesome. And to also give Naruto probably the most biggest lesson of his life. That was just insane. Definitely belongs in S. Right up there. Hinata, you're going up in... The, I don't know why I didn't... Why I just popped you, like, below my guy. You're definitely high up S. There we go. And you know what? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> don't remember you. Should I? Can't remember. Who the hell are you? Are you Madara's brother? You look like Madara's brother. Possibly. I want to say yes, you are Madara's brother. But that's all I can remember you as. So, put you there. The Ten Tails. Did the Ten Tails get an official name? I know the Sage of the Six Paths, Hagoromo, named all Nine Tail Beasts, but he never named the Tenth One, did he? But the Ten Tails, my God, that was intense. Just the first appearance alone, where he escaped a two Tail Beast bombs while even in a barrier, and just that roar alone, it was intimidating. The size alone is intimidating. Jesus Christ! He's literally nature energy incarnate. Has two forms. Very different include the tree. Such a presence alone. We're gonna put you in A. We're gonna put you under Guki. 
You're in aim for presence alone. Emphasis on presence. But barely any personality. Jesus Christ. Jugo. I like that fact that Jugo was the basis of the curse mark. It was thanks to Jugo that we're able to create these curse marks. His abilities alone are pretty cool. I wish we got to learn more about him in Naruto. I think we do in Boruto. But shows how much I paid attention to Boruto really. He's very loyal to Sasuke, even jumping to by his side when possibly we get to see everyone die. <laughs> and he was the source to giving Sasuke a curse marked Susano. I really like his like loyalty. We're gonna put you into C I C. Another Pain. Another Seven Swordsman. Another Seven Swordsman. Jiraiya! Oh my god, rest in peace, Jiraiya. Right from the beginning of Shippuden, I had ample respect for Jiraiya. Just the attachment with Naruto alone was like very inspirational. The filler arcs where we see Jiraiya teaching Naruto this new combination jutsu as well. I think it was like during the filler arc as well. That was still pretty amazing. And of course, final battle with pain. And the legacy that Jiraiya left behind as well. That's just incredible. I really can't oh, make Jiraiya's amazing. I always tear up whenever I see that final battle. Whether it's in the games, whether it's in the anime. It's always amazing. I'm going to put him in S. Uh, you should have been in the previous list. So I'm guessing we're going to make up the fact I'm going to rank you here. Even though your main prominence is in the original Naruto series. He's one of the Sound Ninja 4. He did get reanimated in Shippuden, to be fair. He was the one that faced off with Choji. I can barely remember him, um, really. It was mainly like, I guess if I had to be harsh, death fodder to buy time for Sasuke to get to Orochimaru. I think he had the ability to absorb Chakra as well. Good with Earth Style. I'm going to put you in D. Um, I'm there. About the um, Gold and Silver Brothers. I remember you were like Itachi's former partner before Kisame. You had one of the Seven Ninja Blades. The Executioner's Blade if I remember correctly. I'm going to put you into D. Oh great, my mouse is not letting me click. Underneath the Gold and Silver Brothers. Because I gotta admit, you were pretty incredible. Even with the short amount of time we've got to see you in fillers. So then again, since it's Itachi's memories, I don't think people want to count that as filler. Carpato, starting off as Orochimaru's assistant, to absorbing Orochimaru's body to slowly turn into an Orochimaru. With the powers of the Sound Ninja 4, that, that was an intense filler. Especially since he was the cause of the reanimated ninjas as well. So even if he we didn't get to see him fight. We got to see him being so powerful. The only time we got to see him fight was against Itachi and Sasuke. And the only reason Itachi and Sasuke managed to win was thanks to a looping Genjutsu. Which is still a good way. Especially since he got Kabuto to see what he's done to himself. And to eventually turn himself into a good guy as well. Especially if you pay attention to his backstory as well. Which I really did like. I, I like that. So I'm going to get Kabuto... B, but low B. No, 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 no. We're gonna raise him up a bit. There we go. We're gonna put him roughly mid, mid B. Kaguya Ososuki, the overall final main bad girl of the storyline before we finish Sasuke off. But even then, they did make her quite intimidating. I gotta admit, the whole different dimensional transporting ability that was pretty cool. Having the powers of the tail beast only to lose control, which is kind of cool. And don't forget, because of her story, Boruto managed to come to be, which I know a lot of people probably hate. But I have seen some people are starting to change their minds a little bit Boruto, so that might be a good thing. So I'm gonna put her. If, we, if I had to base it on the powers alone, because she rarely has any personality, to be honest. Just that she wanted all her chakra back from being betrayed long ago. All because of a misunderstanding, Jesus. I'm going to put her into B. Roughly here, above Capito. No, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to put her in between these two Akatsuki members. Kakashi is the goat. <laughs> 
Kakashi fought aside Naruto, even battled through his feelings, learning that Obito was the main bad guy, mastered the one shot gun got, eventually even having two temporarily to fight in the final battle. His Susano looks awesome, by the way. Let's go into S. Gonna go above my guy. I love Kakashi. I love using him in Ultimate Ninja Storm. I love his story. Even the flashbacks. That was just awesome. Kakazu, the man with four hearts. Five if we include his own, probably. He was intimidating. Being able to use wind, fire, I think even lightning based jutsu as well. He's one of the few characters I believe that can use multiple jutsu, but not through learning through biology. I think it's like a, a one line as well, but he exists alongside the first Hokage. So he's really got some experience on him. If you're one of those people who counts age equals experience. Intimidation is very cool. I'm going to put him uh, B as well. Kankuro, just like with normal Naruto, we don't really get to see that much of the Sand Ninja, but that's probably good using Sparrowly. Within the first arc, we get to see how much he's grown by using free puppets and extra puppet and then the next time we see him he uses the uh, sorcery puppet which is pretty cool because it can shoot fire <laughs> and then Leia uses the sorcery puppet which is like a dance with the mother and father puppet I believe which is kind of cool I like that sorcery is now his main puppet it's like he's using the master puppet like the master of all puppets I got I got me I really like it so I'm gonna put him in B um uh yeah i think it's the uh, lack of appearance alone is, is enough to put him all the way down there but i still really like him Karin, one of the mega simps for sasuke i think it was like only mentioned in passing but people really picked on her that she's an uzumaki she has a unique ability that if you bite on her she can heal your wounds with her chakra very sad backstory though because of it being turned into a human chew toy for the sake of war. Which I really hate. That backstory was extremely dark. No wonder she only let Sasuke do it. That sounds so wrong out of context. I do like the feisty personality though. But I'm going to put her into high C with her teammate. I only remember you. I can barely remember your name. Just from the fact you beat up Naruto. So I'm just going to put you into Nah. For now. Lady Katsuyu. The summoning jutsu slope for both Tsunade and Sakura. Very versatile, but you're barely rememberable. Apart from being used for the medical scenes where you had to heal up the entire in the league village or save them from a big almighty push. Giving Naruto the information about the pains. Trying to save the Kage and Tsunade. And making a huge healing area for the final battle. That, that's the only things I can like really remember. Um, we're going to put you into D. I'm going to put you here. Is that a young Naruto? I don't recognize you. You're going there. Am I even halfway through? Oh, God. Next up is Kiba. And I got to admit it, guys. I hate what happened to this character. This character started off like... He wants the center of attention. He knows he's amazing. So he's putting himself out there as like the center of attention. Granted, he was like that in part one, but this one felt like a bit more mature. And then during the war, he like stepped up. He wasn't like a bit ego. So I thought this was going to like make him a bit more mature. But then when Sasuke came back, said he was going to become the Okage. Naruto saying he's going to become the Okage. For him to start then blaring out that he's going to become the Hokage. And then that's his main character point. Like, his dreams to become the Hokage instantly. We, we see this in the Infinite Sukunomi. I think I said that wrong. <laughs> to when he's a grown up. Like, he get Naruto get, become the Hokage. He stepped away. Seriously, dude. No one's believing that. I hate this character. He's going straight into D. It, it is like bomb D tier. I'm not putting him in that because of what he was at the beginning. But the fact they devolved so badly is just... Ow. We got the Spider Ninja from the Sound Ninja 4. He's going straight into detail along with his companion. I did like the fight. I like the whole Spider Ninjutsu idea. That was pretty fun. Next up is Killer B. And I gotta admit, I really love 
Killer B. The first time I ever saw this character was in the video games. I think it was Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Generations. The fact that his cutscenes in the stories was just him rapping away and they, every time he beat a character they were in the background dancing away. I love that. That was my jam. The whole cutscene put together, that was my jam for a bit. And then of course his story where he helps Naruto control the tail beasts really humanizing them if that makes sense showing that even if the jinchuriki's put through hell the jinchuriki doesn't have to become a monster it can still find happiness in the village even with the burden of being jinchuriki i love the bond that he has with Gyuki, even given a nickname ao so i'm gonna put him alongside Gyuki. kinimaru i love him i hate that we had such a short amount of time with him just a mini fight with him and naruto then the fight between Im and Lee, and then Im, Lee, and Gara. That was very intense. And I gotta admit, the meme where he says his bone is his hardest steel, that is hilarious. He's going straight up into B tier. Uh, low B. Yeah, I think low B's alright. I know you from the Ninja War, but I'm gonna put you into... I don't remember, because honestly... If we did a character moments with you, I could barely remember it. Five Tails, Kokoro. I want to say Kokoro is a girl because the voice, both in the sub and the dub. I'm going to have to quickly check that out. Is Kokoro a girl? Okay, Kokoro does not have a gender, but I'm surprised that it's a mixed species between a horse and a dolphin. Where is the dolphin? I got me. I do like Kokoro, even with just a little talk that we got. Very interesting. So, this is where it's going to get a bit difficult. I'm going to put Coco. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to hate myself, but like mid low D. Because we didn't really get that much time with Coco. Conan, our paper angel. I got me. I really liked her. When we first met her, she was very mysterious, but then when the pain invasion storyline took place, we saw that she was a very kind heart, it's especially when it came to Nagato. And then her fight against Toby, Madara, is confusing. <laughs> she really put up an effort, I really did like that. I'm glad that she didn't get, like, reanimated, that would have been, like, a pain in the gut. So, with what she had, I'm going to put her directly into... B. Uh, yeah, top B, above Eno. Because of that kind heartedness. Eno, you lost out because of kindness. Konohamaru, you're going straight into B. We're going to put you into B. I like the little gross that we had throughout Shippuden when it comes to Konohamaru. With him learning around Senga, which is a funny filler story in and of itself, I'm surprised that he used the sexy jutsu to figure out how to use the Rasengan. Who does that? Who thinks, okay, we're learning the Rasengan. I need to use the sexy jutsu to help me here. Kurama, the Nine Tails. Obviously, S tier. It's Kurama. For God's sake. I know, I know. At the beginning, it was like a hit Phil Fox, but then when we get to learn about Kuruma, this mysterious Nine Tail Fox that we just knew was there, full of hatred, learning why he got the hatred, and then wanting to help free the Tail Beast, and then befriending with Naruto all the way through to the end. It's just amazing. I love that. I can't believe how much we went from. A character that we're scared of to a character we just absolutely adore. All thanks to one episode. I love that. I mean, can I say Baby Kurama? So cute. Kurunai Sensei. All that happens to her in the series is she becomes a mom. Very, I, I'm surprised. It's Genju's specialist. Got a surprising love story with Asuma. To then get put onto the side because she's a mom now. Wow. But I love that she's basically one of the reasons why... Naruto go over the depression uh, after Jiraiya. So, we'll put her in because of everything that's happened. C. Low C. I know of you. I cannot remember you. So, we're going, you're going in don't remember. You're one of the seven ninja swordsmen. I honestly can't remember anything about you. Are you the one with the giant sewing needle? I honestly can't remember you. 
Kushina, Naruto's mom. I gotta say, I loved her character when we first met her. I absolutely love her. I wish we got more time with her. Well, we did in fillers, to be fair, with flashbacks. She's an amazing character. I gotta admit as well, I love the, the games. One of her attacks is just the frying pan and she goes flying. And I love that what the other jutsu you use is just her turning into the red hat papinero and she goes absolutely ballistic on the opponent. Except for Minato, who just gets a kind slap. Spicy redhead, you gotta love her. Uh, she goes straight into A tier. Uh, right here. I actually got curious, who would win in a fight, Kushina or the Tentails? I bet the Red Hot Popping Hero would absolutely send the Tentails running. <laughs> Madara Uchiha. This is a character we got teased ever since the first episode of Naruto Shippuden, when Kuruma said that Sasuke reminded him of Madara. And then for Madara to get name dropped as well with Toby. Obito pretend to be Madara. And then to appear as a rare ninja only to curb stomp an entire army sent two meteors down on top of them. Take on the five Kage, run over and help control the Tentails. And then just sit on the sidelines, take control of the Tentails. Oh my god. This is a bad guy that just can do a lot without taking a break. And the fact that he came so overpowered as well, that just says a lot. So I'm going to put Madara all the way in S. Wait, what What just happened? Drugo, you go back in high C, and Madara, you go up there. Did I not grab Madara? What oh, mouse? Is my mouse dying? I absolutely love Madara as a villain. I cannot stress that enough. Madara is an amazing villain. There's no topping Madara. I want to say that's Orochimaru's summoning sake snake but i really want to say there's also alda which is more surprising why isn't alda on here okay so it's manda the only thing i like really remember about manda is the fact that in the first series he ended up with a big hole in his mouth and that he got sacrificed to keep sasuke alive you're going straight into that uh um because you made me laugh a bit you're going a bit high uh around around here yeah, just because you made me laugh, just with the fact that you had a hole in your mouth. Next up, we've got the Two Tails Matatabi. I honestly can't remember Matatabi that much as well. This is the same situation with the Fire Tails. We didn't really get much. Uh, so, going with Kokoro. Right there. It feels bad because Two Tails and Fire Tails are in D. Meanwhile, the Seven and Three Tails are up here in C. Three Tails is getting love just because of the filler episode, and Seven Tails is getting love just because of the games, how annoying it is, and how it's in Juriki appeared in the like a filler. The Mizu Kage, I gotta admit, I may not remember her name, but I did love watching her fight. Lava Cell, that was very, very cool to see. I find it funny that she can't get anyone, even though she's the Mizu Kage. How did that happen? She looks pretty cool. You're going in C. Uh, you're going above these two, and uh, yeah, mid C as well. You may not be be one of our main girls, but you're loved here. Uh, you're the leader of the samurai, aren't you? But I can barely remember you, so we're going to put you into that. Minato, S tier. You're going up there. Up we go. There we go. Yes. Yes, fourth Okage, teleportation in Jutsu, and he pulled everything he could to stop not only the Nine Tails from attacking, but also stop the Mass Man, which of all he was Madara, and then to appear again in Ninja War, and as well, giving a lot of closure to Naruto, saying what he really wanted to say to his parents as well. I love, love Miyato, I think he's amazing, and I love that we, he's getting his own series soon. Do you get any manga as well? Anime series? Or is it just a manga? I, I want to say anime as well. Uh, I believe that's like the priestess, the Uzumaki clan, something like that, but I can barely remember you. I know you were your previous Nine Tails in Chiriki. Because I believe when we were going through like flashbacks for Kurama, you basically just told Kurama to sit there and be quiet. Don't even try and talk to it. Why are you here? You're not even in Shippuden! One of Komaharu's friends, I want to say Mugi? 
we don't really know much about uh, Konawa's friends. The only thing I know about you, and I don't know why I know this or remember this, that she did the sexy jutsu and is okay with it. What in the world's going on, Kakashi Sensei? Uh, I don't know. D. Until you give me an answer why you learn to do sexy jutsu and why do you use it? There has to be a reason. Uh, that's supposed to be Killer V's friend, but he only gets one episode! Doesn't he, like, one or two episodes? And then there's nothing to do with him ever again? Second Suji Kage, I want to say. I think he's the second. Like, he uses particle style. D. Low D. Yeah, low D. You know what? Kiba's worse. Because <laughs> I didn't like you. I hate him. And you're going to with the girl. Because I want an answer on why on earth you, she learned the sexy jutsu. It's one of life's many questions. Nagato. No question. You're going straight into A. Because you really, really, really helped Naruto out. With the whole pain storyline. We, we get to see both Jiraiya's mistakes and accomplishments face off against each other. It's thanks to him that Naruto became the hero of the Hidden League Village, but it's thanks to him as well that Naruto has gathered the resolve he needs to like really push forward as well. All well, thanks to that one storyline, even when he got reanimated as well, really helped Naruto with his drive as well to move forward in knowing what he needs to do. Your Tsunade's younger brother, I want to say, don't really know much about you. Neji, you were amazing. You're going up there as well into A tier. Uh, you're above Choji. Yeah, 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 yeah. Above Asma. Ooh, this is where we go a bit difficult. Uh, there's no way you could go above Kushina. But now, yeah, Neji, you're amazing. After the OG series, Neji has been determined to like help Naruto out and to not only that, but be a support to Hinata. I love that after the time skip, Neji's like a lot more mature, even going to Jonin and still respecting Hinata and really making amends. I love that. And that he cares about Hinata so much. I wouldn't be surprised if he sees Hinata as like a little sister, thanks to it as well. I'm not one of those people that are going to ship him. There's no way. There's no way. I'm not into incest. But I love that he's like sacrificed himself as well. Saved Naruto and Hinata. Uh, you're one of the pain ninjas so we're going to put you into nah. Obito. Literally the driving force behind the Akatsuki ninja war. You, it was a serious antagonist. Hard to believe as well. This one ninja who got manipulated by Madara caused all this death and destruction. Was actually a friend of Kakashi. But luckily, after the whole became the Tentails in Jurikin got beaten by Naruto, he starts to redeem himself slowly. And I like that, like, everyone's not, like, fully trusting him. But it's because that Naruto saw what happened. And that after watching him become a Jinchuriki, he knows what's going on. And that's why probably Naruto is the only ninja that could probably get through to Obito after he became a Jinchuriki. They say the same dream. Is Obito fully forgiven though for what happened? I want to say it's like fully forgiven. But I like that that he still fight alongside Naruto. Turned back into the Obito that wanted to become the Hokage. But I love that Obito tried to um, fight alongside Naruto. And even after sacrificing himself, still fought alongside them by giving Kakashi his Sharingan temporarily. It's very confusing. So you're going in straight into A tier. Uh, yeah, roughly around. Yeah, roughly around here. Uh, I can barely remember you. So you're going into Nah. The Suji Kage. Honestly, he's the more memorable of the Kage to me. Going straight into B tier because of it. Um, a little bit higher. Yeah, because I like him more than Danzo. Because, yeah, the particle style, that was very interesting. But the fact that 
he chose not to take a leading role, but to like, be an assistant leading role to Gara for the Great Ninja War. Not only that, but he also gave Naruto the advice to that we are going to take care of Mara. We're going to do this as the Kage, so we entrust to you to take on the masked one. Orochi Maru, what we were for was going to be the overall villain because of Sasuke, only to get cursed on by Sasuke, only to try and take over Sasuke's body again, but the redemption thing, it sort of makes sense in a way. Orochimaru was like the main antagonist, but then after getting defeated, he then came back through a curse mark through Anko, which sort of makes sense why it's like sort of redemption. Like, he couldn't do anything. But take all this information, like, he failed, he died in the real world, so what would there be the point of him doing if he's, he's going to fail? So I'd rather choose to help. Uh, you're just going to go straight to C, because I don't think you're, like, fully redeemed yet. Though I think you're on the way, from what I've heard about Borto. Uh, you're above those two. There we go. Paku, I honestly can barely remember. You're just a search ninja dog, as far as I know. The only one that can talk. The only memorable thing about you is, is that you're poor soft. Uh, we're going to put you in D. Way above these two. Yeah. Actually, you're above all of them. There we go. I think you're a filler villain. But I can barely remember you. You're the Gara's dad. The only thing I remember about you is the final battle between you and Gara. And that you finally don't see your son as a monster. You're giving your son an emotional moment learning that... He's actually been saved not by Shikaku's power, but by his own mum, put jutsu on him. I think that's how it works. But you're going to strain to Nah, because I can't be bothered. Uh, you're one of the past Kage in the first ever summit that tried to take land off people. So you're going to Nah. <laughs> I can't be bothered with that. Rin, you're going straight into C tier. Like, yeah, low C tier. Because I get it, you're like a very big icon for both Obito and Kakashi. Because he sacrificed himself before Kakashi, so that's what tormented him. But the fact that you were also a drive for Obito to move forward as well, which is pretty cool. And all you were doing was just like, you're trying to be there for the people close to you as well. I love that this girl was very supportive as well. If Sakura was more like her, I'm pretty sure a lot of people liked her more. But I really hate the end of her story. Where like, she got captured, turned into a free-tail Jinchuriki, only to be like a ticking time bomb to turn into the Jinchuriki. She knows it as well, and that she had to sacrifice herself. But I do like we got to see her like, again in like the spirit world, if that makes sense. I do like that, and that even she's forgiven Obito and understands what's happened. I do hope that the, those two have like gone together in the afterlife, considering that's like Obito's ultimate goal. <laughs> Lee. Why is this the picture of a young Lee? Lee's got a vest now. Why? I do like Lee, Lee adult Lee. He's still uh, crazy to fight. It's just insane. I think I better put him in the same rank as I did last time. So you're going to A tier, my friend. Uh, low A. Because again, you, you haven't changed much, but you're going down because of it. Uh, the four tails in Cherokee. I can barely remember you. So let's put you with Hon. Uh, high up there because. You're the one who got all the rest of the jury keys to do something. Six Tails Saiken. I talked about you a little bit within um, the Five Tails. The fact that we got to saw your Jinjuri key in a filler arc already. So we kind of got like a tease of what you were. Uh, but uh, maybe... Uh, but again, that was the Jinjuri key, not Saiken. So yeah, we'll put you there. I do find the interest thing just because like, you're a slimy slug with Bubble Psyll. You know what, no, you're going a little bit high, higher. I was, I was going to put you in Tech Delby's order in the D rank if it came down to it, but no. We'll put you um, above because I do like the whole bubble juice suit sort of thing. That's kind of funny. And Mark Tabby's above you guys because cat. <laughs> Sai, I got to admit, when I first saw Sai, I don't know why my head thought this was Sasuke. Like he just had like a buzz cut or something. But then when I lay on Soul Sai, I thought something seemed very off, but I'm glad they explained why. Like, like Sai was a member of the Foundation and they don't really care really they do things about question which made a lot of sense but then his character after dancer was just like get more in tune with his emotions made a lot of sense it made his art as well feel like a lot more intriguing just because he can now be in touch with his emotions 
and art is about emotions. I'm going to put you into B. Um, yeah, I'm going to put you there, like mid low B, because um, I do like your character. I do find fancy. I, I like the growth. But I do think after you joined and you had your story to like try and get you to join the group. If you're drifting off a little bit. I like that little friendship that he was getting with Lee during the um, war as well. But I wish that it grew a little more. Uh, you're one of the sound ninja. You were like the leader, weren't you? You are like the leader of the sound ninja. We're going to put you in like D. Yeah, there we go. Right there. With the rest of the sound ninja. Have we done all the sound ninjas already? Oh, no. No, she's still on the way. May as well, we might as well put all the sound ninjas together while we're at it. Yeah. Oh no, we're gonna put you there because of the Genjutsu flu. I find that very interesting. Uh, Kakashi's dad. I can barely remember Kakashi. I know that's probably bad of me. The only thing I remember is like Kakashi briefly saw him after the sacrifice. So probably nah, but hi nah. Nah, I just don't. I just put him in nah if I just don't want to. So put him in nah for now. Sakura. I know everyone hates her. I know she probably deserves her own bin, <laughs> bin rank. But I'm actually gonna try and dissect her character for this one before I put her into rank, because I don't really feel that much hatred towards Sakura that most fans normally do. And this is probably because of what I said in the last rank video: the fact that she, uh, she got like a filler arc to try and give a character like more depth. Like she feels bad for what happened. And to be fair, it did get te technically, like, revisited as well. I love that in the beginning, like, she became this, like, very strong woman. Like, a mini Tsunade. Like, she's got super strength, took on one of the Katsuki members, and even used her magical ninjutsu to be a big accent. But then after the whole, it did feel like a little bit of regression sort of thing. Like, she saw her crush, and then she's turned back to what she was before. And then lost a lot of that, which is weird. Or am I the only one who thinks that? And then during the pain, did she did she try to fight? No, it was a day off, so I guess she wasn't like fully equipped. But she just cried out for Naruto after all this death. I, I get it, like a lot of pressure just came on. But then she couldn't like move, move, I guess. And then I I don't know. She like warmed up to Naruto after realizing, yeah, he's actually been there for her. But then to devastating learn from Sai that the only reason Naruto's been pushing forward is because of the promise and that. That promise been lingering on Naruto. And then to try and erase the promise by saying that she loves Naruto now over Sasuke. There had to be a better way to do that than to put yourself into a relationship that you had no intention of going into. I don't know. If, if they actually went that route and Sakura was going to date Naruto because... Of that, there had to be a better reason. Like, Sakura came to, like, realization that Naruto has been there for her and he's gone so strong. While Sasuke's pulling deep into Like, get a realization. Not, like, tell yourself that this is the only option for yourself. You have to do this. Like, give a general reason. But then again, what would Sakura actually have done? But then again, what could Sakura actually do to persuade Naruto not to go after Sasuke anymore? That seems a lot more in line with her character. I really think, though, a lot of people probably wouldn't have hated her so much if she, like, apologized to Naruto a lot more. I feel like her character's been, like, a fucking yo-yo, and a lot of people tend to focus on the negative. But I'm gonna put her in B. Uh, let's put her above Eno, because at least she's attempting. She's doing it wrong, but her attentions are pure, at the very least. Don't remember you... Sorcery of the Red Sand, the first Akatsuki member to go splat, but I did like it. I like this, uh, the fact that he was using like the previous Kazakage and the Iron Sand, and then he was his own puppet as well. I found that very interesting, but then afterwards, he's a literal puppet to be used by Conqueror. We'll put you in C, um, put you here because of your presence alone being the first Akatsuki member they took him down. And the fact that you controlled like a hundred puppets at once, that was terrifying. Sasuke. 
Now, Sasuke is very interesting. When we first see Sasuke after the time skip, he's like a totally different character, like obsessed with power, able to knock out Orochimaru eventually. The whole fight with Itachi was very interesting. I like that storyline gave us a little bit of insight to Sasuke's mind, only to do a complete 180 afterwards after the fight with Itachi to fight the Inlay Village, which I like. We're exploring Sasuke's darkness. Like, what's his mindset's probably shattered because he has no idea what to believe anymore. And then, after the talk with the Kage, to eventually become a Hokage that even though everyone will hate, but he's doing it for the sake of the people. And the final battle of Naruto, that was intense. Only to become full circle, saved by the friend. I gotta admit, Sasuke's character is very unique. But he's going into A. All the way up to A. High A. So close to S. Probably will be S eventually, time will tell. Like, if I probably rewatched the entire series or played the games, it'll probably go up to S. But I do like the whole concept Sasuke takes power while Naruto earns power. Like, all the jutsu Sasuke gets gets handed to him while Naruto earns his jutsu. I, I think, like, someone has mentioned that once and I, I see it and I can't unsee it. I don't know how true that is, but I do like that whole concept. It's like the whole differences of Naruto and Sasuke. And the whole difference puts them in high A. <laughs> I wonder where that will leave Naruto. We'll soon find out. Uh, don't remember you. Shikamaru and his dad. We'll do you two together. I really like Shikamaru. He's going straight up into A. I've lost you. There you are. A tier. Because he was one of the first friends that Naruto met after the time skip. And he's believed in Naruto for the longest time. We all know that Shikamaru is an amazing tactical specialist. Even coming up with a plan to take out Deidara who's immortal. And to use his genius so much within the war. That he was able to be a valuable asset. And even getting training from Kakashi to become an assistant for Naruto when he becomes the Hokage. Definitely shows he had a lot of respect for Naruto as well. I just love Shikamaru's character. A really amazing supporting character. And the whole it's a drag is so relatable. But Dad on the other hand. We're going to put you in C tier. Because honestly I can't remember you. But I definitely know you're a huge tactical specialist. You're a huge part of the war as well. And your legacy has definitely lived on within Shikamaru. Okay we've got the Grand Marto. We didn't get to see much of her compared to um, Kitato, so we're going to put you in D for now. Way, no way down there. Uh, high up there. Yep. Far beyond these two. Uh, you're not better than Tail B, so yeah. Right there. There we go. There. There. I've, I still like she's like a part of like Team Jiraiya. She's just the grandma of the group. That's all I can remember. Shino. Now, I have some gripe when it comes to Shino. Why did he slowly become a background character? He had such a presence in part 1, but nothing really to stand out about in part 2, other than, aha, he's the character that gets forgotten. I love that he had like a whole filler episode dedicated to him, but he was like taking on his mentor, who got reanimated. I love that. And then eventually he finds a drive to become a teacher, because he gets noticed. <laughs> But Shino was like a very interesting character in part one. What happened? What made you slip from glory? E even his personality took a bit one eight. Put you in D. I really don't want to. But that's what happened to him. Uh, size, big brother. That's all I remember you for. So you're going in there. Sishri Uchiha. We only get to really know about him in fillers. Itachi's best friend. The mentor that taught. In like foundations of ninjutsu and helped him become the ninja that we all know. Even sacrificed himself after Danzo took one of his eyes, giving the rain eye to Itachi, giving him the monkey kill Sharingan. Even in the games, he's, he's pretty cool because the games gave him a Susano. I don't know if that's like actual canon that he had unlocked his Susano, but I'm glad the games gave him like a proper full Susano. I'm gonna put you in C. Low C. Because it's thanks to you, Itachi became who he was. Shizune. Just like last one, in my opinion, some Shizune hasn't really changed much. She's Tsunade assistant. She's a character that will give us, like, the information that we don't really know. But, like, fill in the gaps. So, you're going high D. Shukaku, the one tail. 
We didn't really get to see much of Shikaku in part one. He got instead taken away, and we never get to see him until he was freed. Part one is the only thing that really makes him there. It doesn't feel right putting him in detail with the rest of the um, Tail Beast, but it doesn't feel right putting him in C tier along with the three and seven tails. Oh, this is a. We're gonna put him above the Sound Ninja. Presence and memory. That's it. Uh, we're gonna put you in there uh, because I think you're the last of pains, apart from the actual pain which we'll care about. Son Goku, the four tails. The tail beast that started Naruto to talk to the tail beast, like eye to eye. And the first tail beast that entrusted Naruto with Chakra. Definitely an iconic tail beast, I think, because of that. Face of this tail beast that the other tail beast chose to trust Naruto. Uh, we're gonna put you in C. Um, yeah, above those tail beasts. Because you're, you're the one that started it all. Suigetsu, one of Sasuke's teammates. I believe it's goals that get all the seven swords for the hidden mists. It starts off with the executioner's blade. Which is pretty simple. I love his ability though to turn into war. That was such a fascinating ability. I wish we got to see him like fight a bit more. It would be interesting to see like how he would use that. He's going straight into C. Yeah, he can join his teammates. Uh, Yeah, in the middle. Don't know who you are, Tamari. I think of, out of all the Sand Ninjas that we get to meet, she's the one that has the most character insight, I believe. Because she's the liaisons between the village and the Hidden Sand Village. I think that's the right word. And she even helped out Konohama after watching him do the Rasengan against her. <laughs> one of the most powerful Wind Ninja apart from Naruto. And she's even, like, supported Shikamaru. And I love the uh, final story as well. Like, it, leading up to Naruto and Hinata's wedding. And that she got flustered while being with Shikamaru. And thanks to that, causing them to get together. Let's go and see. Uh, yeah. Uh, hi, C. Why not? Pain. I love Pain as a villain. This is going to sound weird considering he's called Pain. <laughs> Being the Akatsuki member that took out Jiraiya, and being at the time Naruto's greatest foe, the ultimate antagonist you'll face in the second Ultimate Ninja Storm game as well, you're so hard to beat. And the fact that he made, took out Jiraiya as well made it so much personal as well for Naruto to take on. If it wasn't for the fact that Minato helped Naruto inside his mind, I think Pain would have won that fight. You're going straight into A tier, my friend. Uh. There. Around high mid A. 10 10. Just like in the first one, I wish so much more could have been done to 10 10. My god, she's supposed to be one of the main leading girls and she is so sidelined. It's so painful. Hashtag love for 10 10. D as well, same place as last time. The second Hokage. Tobi Rama. I think Tobi Rama probably had it rough as a Hokage, because the first Hokage wanted bonds with the Uchiha clan. Meanwhile, Tobi Rama could not fully accept the Uchiha clan, but he had to because of his role as the Hokage. Uh, but I find it interesting that he created a lot of the jutsu that is used the Shadow Clone jutsu, the Flying Rising jutsu, he's the one that created it, even creating the Reanimation jutsu. I find that very interesting. He's going into C, um, mid C, yeah, I think that's a good place for him. Uh, I want to say you're one of the past Kake, but I honestly can't remember you. You're the third, uh, Sujika, no, you're the third Kazakage. But you're going into Nah. Tsunade, our fifth Hokage, come on, Tsunade, you're an absolute beast, and I love that. Even during the pain fight, she's... Stood her ground even though she was outmatched. Probably the best healing ninja ever. Until Sakura takes her place. She's going straight into A tier. Uh, we're going to put you... Above the Sage Stick Pass. An amazing woman. Uh, the other Konohamaru friend. I can't remember you. 
So we're going to get you to join her. Utakata. The six sales in Cherokee. Honestly, this all comes from the filler arc. He seems like such a person until we probably, we put two and two together why he's like this. Because again, he's a six sales in Cherokee. Not until right at the end of the story. But I find it very interesting. Even the fact that, even in the main story, they acknowledge that filler and gave us like a little episode to acknowledge that connection. I wish they did that a little bit more in the storyline. Then again, there's a lot of filler I wish they acknowledged as well. <laughs> Uh, Utakata, I think because of the filler, we're going to put you into D. Uh, we're going to put you there. Naruto is our main character. S tier, S tier, S tier. Need I say more? <laughs> Naruto's story is very interesting. I love watching him grow. He's one of my favorite anime characters of all time. Maybe because I grew up with him. He's such an icon for me. Uh, but where to put him in S? Above, 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 above. Yeah. Hinata just takes the stick. <laughs> It'll be bad. <laughs> Is it bad that... Uh, you know what? No, 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 no. S. Top S all the way. Because it's his story. I was going to suggest to put Hinata above Naruto as well. Oh, come on. His, his future wife is better than him. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do that. We're, we're on the home straight. Come on, we can finish this. Uh, the third tail team, Churiki, Uh... He gives him a commanding presence. Uh, we're going to put you in D. Above him. There we go. Commanding presence alone. And plus we get a flashback with him in the Itachi storyline. Let's first put you in Don't Remember because I don't know you. Captain Yamato. I like that he was a former armor Black Ops. Has a connection with Kakashi. And he seemed like a very interesting like second captain. Or second squad leader to like turn to. Especially with his... Wood style usage as well. That was a very good mystery. Until we finally learned how that happened. I hate though that he had to be disappeared for the sake of the enemy. I hate that he got taken away from the entire storyline. We don't know what on earth happened to him. Until the infinite Tsukunomi happened. I hate that. You're going to see. What, what just happened? Where did Captain Yamato go? Okay, you're going there. Where did Yamato go? Oh, there he is, indeed. Going into C tier. Above the tail piece. Yukito Ni. The second tail, Jinchuriki. You're going with the rest. Zabuza. Even though he only appeared as a reanimation ninja, I do like that. That little touch of with facing this person again, especially with Kakashi. Especially since after that fight, I feel like Kakashi got a new drive to like end this war. Especially since he had to revisit a bad guy he respected. And come on, that Kakashi speech, reanimation, really is unforgivable. That is intense. And I like that because of this fight as well. He technically, like, in a certain way, passed on the Executioner's Blade to Kakashi. I wish Kakashi kept it, though, for, like, the rest of the world. It would be amazing to see him use the Executioner's Blade against Obito. <laughs> I don't know why. I wish I saw that. I wish that happened. Uh, Zabaza, you're going into detail, though, because... You're only like there for a few episodes, and it's sad. It saddens me. Uh, yeah, there. Uh, if you made an appearance, that's news to me. Black Zetsu. I'm going to combine both Zetsus, white and black, for this one. Because I don't know why we didn't get white Zetsu. I get black Zetsu is a more prominent one, but why not white Zetsu in this list? Uh, you guys will probably think of me as insane for that, but come on. Black says who I get it, but he wasn't much of a character until right at the end. What? Why? Helped betray Madara to bring back Kaguya. It was like the, it's supposed to be this ninja that molded the ninja world to what it is, set events in motion. I can't believe that. <sighs> Going into D. Even White says so. There's just not much to know about them. But D tier, yeah, low D. I hate that character much more than Kiba. Kiba's annoying. But Black Zetsu is just like, stop. Gara, A rank, all the way. Even after he lost his tail beast, being the character that helped us see that Naruto is a lot more stronger, showing us that yes, even a Jujuriki can become a Kage as well, gives Naruto so much hope that he can do it as well. Even though Naruto could not achieve his goal before Gara, I'm glad that Naruto that he achieved his goal. I just like Gara's storyline that done so much 
for not only the Hen Sand Village, for the war. And his ultimate goal is just like be one of Naruto's closest friends. I love that. Uh, gonna put you above these two. Yeah, gonna put you above these two. In fact, we're gonna put Lee above you, Sage Six Path. Uh, you're in an ninja, but I don't know much about you. I feel like you're the you're one of the people explosions. No, that's you. Even then, I don't remember you. Or you. Or you. How were the last four people I can't remember? We did it, guys. This is our Naruto Shippuden character rankings. This took forever to record. I'm glad it's over. But I did like revisiting a lot of these characters. As I mentioned before, Naruto is one of the animes that got me into watching anime. I grew up with the series. I watched everything religiously. Even the filler. And I have to still say, Naruto still holds a special place in my heart. These characters and what they've done still hold a very special place in my heart. This actually gets me wanting to like binge watch Naruto again. But do I have the time to watch nearly a thousand episodes all at once? <laughs> maybe I'll try with taking out the filler. Who knows? Maybe I'll maybe I'll try what some people have done and watch it without the filler. See if, see if like opinions can change. Who knows? All right, so we're gonna leave leave it at that, guys. What do you think? Do you like my rankings? Do you think you would have done something different? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you like me doing this tier video and want me to do more, make sure you hit the like and subscribe as well so you don't miss out. So we're gonna leave it at that, guys. I'm gonna probably binge watch now the Ultimate Ninja Storm games because I think that's the best way for me to relive Naruto as Naruto himself. So until next time guys, this is me, signing out. Bye bye.